Rush Limbaugh decided to go after MSNBC on his show yesterday in the most comical way imaginable. Let's listen. Look at MSNBC. They are barely breathing. They barely have an audience. They barely have enough to rate an asterisk. It's embarrassing. 55,000 people peak on something that bills itself as a national news network. And what did they do? They threw out anything that could be considered mainstream, and they just went pedal to the metal, progressive left-wing extreme. And they had the proper diversity. They had a quasi-conservative male host with a liberal female co-host in their morning show. Then they have some, then they have the requisite number of African Americans, a requisite number of uh, uh, European accented Americans. They have a number of lesbians. They have Hispanics. They have this whole diversity thing, this silly diversity thing, as though everything depends on what you look like. And they forgot all about content. And the reason they forgot about content is because they were arrogant and assumed that everybody is as insane as they are. And I think, you know, I, I often sit here and say that the Democrat base has been driven insane with rage and hatred by the daily utterances of Democrats. I mean, the Democrat Party today is filled with hatred, filled with rage of all of their enemies, opponents, people they don't like, and they have driven their base livid with... I think they have succumbed to it, in a sense. They're always angry. They're constantly angry, filled with rage and hatred. They don't just disagree with us. They have a, they have a visceral hatred, and it shows up, and they, nobody wants to watch that, and they think that's who their audience is. They have no idea about content, content, content. That must be the most projection jam-packed into, like, a two-minute clip I've ever heard. Everything he said there applies to him and applies to right-wing media. He's like, all they do is hate, 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 hate. They're full of rage. Uh, they, you know, they don't just view us as people they disagree with. They view us as, like, the enemy. Rush, you've made, made a career off doing exactly that to the left. You're doing it right now! And for the record, do I hate? Oh yeah. But I hate your ideas. I hate your policies. Because they're wrong, and they're silly, and they're bad, and they would hurt the American people. I don't hate the people themselves. Everybody can have my respect as a human being. Not everybody can have my respect as an intellectual. Whereas with Rush, oh please, like he would ever make a distinction like that? I mean, we've played clips where he contends that it's not... He says exactly that, and he's open about it. Like, oh yeah, no, I don't just disagree with the left. I think they're evil. Like, I think they're trying to bring down America. He says it all the time! That was pure projection. And uh, please, spare me uh, Rush Limbaugh going after somebody else for their, quote, content. Says the guy who argues on a daily basis that Republicans uh, don't obstruct Obama enough. They don't say no enough. Flat out factually incorrect, all it would take is a simple Google search to prove it wrong. This Congress under Obama has the record on filibusters, literally. The record. Most filibusters in recorded history under this Congress. They tried to repeal Obamacare, depending on how you count it, either 56 times or if you count all like the semi-repeal attempts and just the measures that voice disapproval, 67 times. That group of people? That group of people is too kind to Obama. But this is what he argues on a daily basis. They shut down the government because they couldn't get their way. And this group is too kind to the Democrats and Obama? He's slamming somebody else's content. I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You have, you have what may be the worst content of any host anywhere. Anywhere. And not just politics. All different shit. Are you kidding me? I mean, in all seriousness, Bill O'Reilly looks like fucking Albert Einstein or Neil deGrasse Tyson next to your dumbass. At least Bill O'Reilly comes up with arguments that we need to stop and think about for a second in order to debunk them. You, it's just like verbal diarrhea all day long with no evidence, no facts, no data. You just sound like a silly person day in and day out. And then I also love how he attacks uh, silly diversity. He goes, ah, oh, they tried diversity and that's why they're doing bad. Really? That's the diversity's the problem? 
how is that it, like to rush? Being against diversity makes sense just for the sake of being against diversity. So he's against uh, all different minority groups just because they're minority groups. Don't we have a word for that? I believe it starts with a B. It rhymes with spigot. Yeah, I'll think about it and get back to you. But it's funny how, it, like, that's pure pandering to his audience, and he might actually believe it, which is the scariest thing, because he really is your old... Uh, grandpa or your racist uncle at the Thanksgiving dinner table who says wacky shit and you just roll your eyes and you don't even want to bother to try to argue with them because you know that logic doesn't permeate the concrete cinder block head they have. Uh, but the two best parts. Uh, number one, the numbers on MSNBC. So is it true that the, the numbers on MSNBC are bad? Absolutely. I slam them on a daily basis. We talk about it on a daily basis. The other day I mocked Ronan Farrow and had a joyous time doing it. It's about time somebody said, hey, dude, sorry, but you're really bad at your job. You're not entertaining and it's not substantive. Just stop, right? So I'm, I'm on the page of, hey, MSNBC does a shitty job. But understand, he did lie. He absolutely lied about the number. He said 55,000 peak. No, no, not 55,000 peak. Incorrect. Uh, Maybe you're looking at just the key demographic, not total, and you've got to be looking at, like, the middle of the day. So that's... See, this is Rush Limbaugh in a nutshell. Twist everything or outright lie about things and try to make your case better, but in the process you're destroying your own case because you show that you don't give a shit about really sticking to the actual information. I Again, I look at the... I'm in the business. I look at the numbers all the time. Yes, MSNBC does bad. Yes, you know, prime times, they get like 300,000, 400,000 people that watch, maybe 500,000. But the 55,000 number, he's just, he's looking at something specific. Key demographic, middle of the day. He's not giving you any context. He's just trying to make you think, oh, only 55,000. But the biggest irony of it all, he's attacking them for their ratings? Dude, glass fucking house. Glass house all day long. You have the worst ratings ever. First of all, all the advertisers fled from Rush. They're gonzo. Ever since the, the incident where he called Sandra Fluke a slut, everybody's like, oh, I want nothing to do with him, to the point where in his former flagship station here in New York, he's not on it anymore, tells you something, uh, there was dead air playing during his breaks. It was just dead air. It was public service announcements and dead air. That's how much all the advertisers were like, I'm gone, this guy, no, we're just not going to do it. The guy's too crazy. So you want to know the specifics on this, just how bad his ratings are? See, unlike Rush, I'll give real specifics, not made-up ones or just platitudes. Uh, so in Atlanta, now remember, Rush was touted for the longest time. Number one in talk radio, millions of people listen to him all the time, every second, he's so great. So number one, right? Okay, let's take a look. Atlanta, Georgia. Well, he's not number one, but he's doing all right. Third out of 29. Okay, Rush, not bad, not bad. Okay. Phoenix, Arizona. A little worse. Sixth. Sixth out of 33. Hang it in there. New York. 21st out of 37. Los Angeles. 37th out of 45. San Francisco. 29th out of 34. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. 18th out of 30. Houston. 16th out of 30. Washington, D.C., 13th out of 29. Philadelphia, 18th out of 31. Boston, 15th out of 25. Miami, 24th out of 33. Seattle, 22nd out of 33. Minneapolis, 16th out of 26. San Diego, 22nd out of 30. Tampa, 15th out of 29. Denver, 13th out of 33. Nassau and Suffolk, 17th out of 38. Baltimore, 15th out of 31. Now, what I need you to understand is this. For the longest time, he's been propped up. A, a lot of the parent companies that own these airwaves, they're super right-wing. In fact, Bain Capital is one of them, Mitt Romney's old uh, investment bank. So they prop up all the right-wing talk stations. And they actively suppress the shit out of the liberal ones. They outright just kick them off in many respects. Ask Mike Malloy. He was just as popular as these guys, the right-wing talkers, but they just took him off all the main uh, radio stations. So they prop these guys up on the best stations with the best sound quality, with the biggest reach, and they still do bad. Did you know in some markets, Rush Limbaugh is being beaten by college radio? College radio only has a radius of like 34 feet, and he's being beaten uh, by them. 
TikTok, son, and I haven't even brought up the fact that uh, he gets virtually all his money now from right-wing think tanks. Because all the advertisers are gone, the right-wing think tanks subsidize him, and in return, he does, like, on-air things for whoever it is, Freedom Works or uh, Heritage Foundation, whoever the right-wing think tanks are that fund him. I don't know the specific ones that do, because it changes all the time, and Levin, too, does the same thing, Hannity. And uh, word is that they've given these guys so much money, and they expected a return on investment. They expected people who listen to the show to go join and become members of these think tanks, these groups. Nope. They lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases, millions of dollars in other cases between Beck, Limbaugh, Hannity. So TikTok, the advertisers are gone. As soon as the, the funding gets cut off from their sugar daddies, which is the right-wing think tanks, it's over. 